There was just nothing to explain it, nothing. It was just very, very scary. You are about to see real people. This is not normal. Reliving horrifying paranormal encounters for the first time. <laughs> I was scared to death. When the living come face to face with evil. Do you believe me now? I just wanted somebody to believe. I buried this for nearly 30 years. Be prepared to be afraid. <laughs> Paranormal Survivor 2, Adina's Midnight Stalker, story number 28, take one. to the area because it was a really nice old area with lots of townhouses and it was a really big beautiful townhouse I loved it right from the beginning my mom was right down the street too so that helped Dina had barely moved in when she started to have strange experiences in her new home. I wasn't able to turn any lights on at night. I'd go to the bathroom, flick the switch, and nothing would go on. And I'd think to myself, I gotta change the light bulb in the morning. The next morning it would work. The light would go on. Same thing with living room lights, uh, kitchen lights. You'd always feel like there was something watching you all the time. Everybody felt it. Anybody that came in, I would catch them staring at the stairs and ask them why they were doing that. One night, I went to the kitchen. I was half asleep. I was just going to get a drink. I tried to turn on the light, and when I did, this big, bright light shot out of the bulb. I've seen all these silhouettes in my kitchen, all these people in my kitchen. I ran into my bed, and I just put the covers over myself and I was up all night until the sun came up. I didn't sleep. Dina's fear was nothing compared to the terror she was about to feel. I awoke to something pushing my shoulders back and I couldn't move, I couldn't move my upper body. It was pinned down. And when I opened my eyes, um, there was a guy on top of me. It wasn't a guy, it was a spirit, it was a ghost. I couldn't move, I couldn't... I couldn't think. I was... I was trapped, mentally and physically trapped by this thing. He was pure evil, he was evil. I can't even say what he said to me on camera. It's so vulgar and disgusting. I'll never forget it, I'll tell you that. I'll never forget his voice, ever, as long as I live. I'll never forget it. Seeking help, Dina told her mother about the attack. She didn't really think it was real or she didn't think I was 
She maybe thought I was embellishing, or she thought. I'd, I'd always try and think of something logical. You know, you were dreaming or anything else, anything but that. Dina was terrified and tried to get rid of the spirit herself. I found this prayer book and I started to bless the house on my own. And I had a good feeling like it was gonna be okay. I thought that it would take anything evil or anything with any bad intent out. And that was a mistake. It just, it got worse. Attempting to cleanse a property by yourself, uh, not knowing really what you're doing, can lead to activity becoming worse, the haunting becoming worse. Uh, and the reason for that is because you don't know what you're doing and you don't know how to go about it. Uh, so it, it can backfire on you. Dina's attempt to cleanse her home didn't work. I was in bed again in my, my bedroom and um, I was just sleeping and then I felt something crawling up my body. I couldn't move. I was trying to move, I was trying to get up. And something was just you. Like, you can feel the pressure. It's like, how is something doing this? You could hear the grunts, like his raspy, the raspy breathing, very heavy, raspy breathing. He said, Die, bitch. Bitch. Horror. Horrific. Soon, the spirit began to torment Dina in other ways. I was checking my voicemails on my cell phone, and I got a voicemail. To listen to your messages, press 1. Watching you. It was him. He was on my voicemail. <laughs> Dina Rotondo was being attacked in her bed by an evil spirit. But just when she thought it couldn't get any worse, it began to torment her in other ways. I am watching you. How did he get there? How did he do that? You know, I didn't know what to think. I was a voice saying, I see you. I, I can see you. I, am, I see you in the shower. Every private thing of my life is someone watching. I always had eyes on me, and he let me know that. I called the police. I let the police listen to the message, hoping that they would be able to find a logical explanation. The officer was very helpful. They did try and look and find out if there was a phone number, but nobody, there was no phone number. There was nothing, nothing for that time. No record, nothing. There was nothing for that phone call. Hoping to escape the evil spirit, Dina decided to move into a new house along with her mother. I thought that was a great idea. We could help each other with the rent and economically it would be uh, good for both of us. I felt like if she's around, nothing's, you know, nothing's gonna happen, you know? I guess you get that way with your mother. 
feel safe. Sleeping alongside her mother, Dina finally felt safe. My mother and I uh, were sharing a bed that night. The air conditioner was only in one room. It was a really hot night. And it was about 3 AM. I said to Dina, what's that? And uh, she didn't know. So I went into the bathroom to check it out. Things just started to fall off the shelves in the bathtub. All the bottles started to fall one by one into the tub. And then she ran back into the bed. And then they started falling off the counter into the sink. And it's going and going and going. It's just not stopping. I said, do you believe me now? Do you believe me now? Please, believe me. I just wanted somebody to believe. And she, she did, yeah. She's seeing it with her own eyes. We were just, we were petrified. That's all, we were petrified. Dina called paranormal investigator John Moore and psychic medium Craig Lee Floor. We went in the home right away. I felt a very aggressive and oppressive spirit. It felt like something was sitting on your chest. It wasn't nice. It, it, it was obvious that there was definitely something going on. I looked for the hot spots of what I think will be the hot spots. Um, one was she had a mirror in the hallway, which was kind of, I would say maybe used as a portal. But you definitely felt uncomfortable going into her room. He didn't have to tell you. He didn't want you there. You knew he didn't want you there. They said there was um, definitely an evil entity in the house. The, the entity was definitely demonic in nature. There was no question that that was what he was. That freaked me out. I, I knew he was evil but I didn't know he was demonic. That's, that's a whole other kind of scared. Because he was a demon and they had to get somebody in that knew how to deal with demonic entities. seen the man since John and Craig cleansed my house. I hope I never see him again. But I, I'm still weary. I don't know. I don't know if he's really gone. It can be very difficult to totally ever get rid of uh, an evil or negative spirit just because they are so powerful. You can try crossing them over, you can try using an exorcism to get rid of them, but it may not always work. He's such a strong force. stuck with me for so long. I'm scared. I'm still scared.
Sometimes evil spirits seem to enjoy terrorizing their living victims face to face over a long period of time. On other occasions, the living see the face of evil for just a fleeting moment. But that doesn't make it any less terrifying. Paranormal Survivor 2, story number 8, take 1. In 2005, we found this house and bought it then. It had been empty for about two years. Nice big white house. Uh, it was a nice, comfortable house. It was what we needed. Backed onto a church. Nice background. It was good. What Wayne and Darcy didn't know was that this average house hid some less than average occupants. Once we bought the house, things started to happen. I was bent over the couch, um, turning on the light, I believe, and I got tapped on the shoulder three times. And I heard him say something to the effect of, what would you like? Like, what do you want? I put my head in the living room, and I could see him turn around and the color go from his face. She was nowhere near me when I turned around, and it kind of scared me. That was just the beginning of the strange activity in the house. There would be times that I would be in bed and it sounded like somebody was washing the dishes in the kitchen um, by hand and stacking them in a dish drainer um, and walking throughout the kitchen. Strange things had started to happen in Wayne and Darcy's new home. Doors were opening and closing, including the pantry door, which is just off the kitchen. I came downstairs. I didn't know if somebody was in the house. just came quietly down the stairs as much as I could and lurked about, but there was nothing, nothing there. Soon the activity started to become more frequent and increase in intensity. watching TV, and just out of nowhere, it sounds like the china cabinet falls over, smashing everything. 
It's loud. You feel the vibration. It's, it's, it's pretty scary. We jumped out of the chairs, went in the dining room, and China Cabinet's still standing there. And we just looked at each other and looked in the dining room, and we were, we were scared. We didn't know what to think. And then again, but it came from upstairs, from the bedroom that we believed was right above the living room. But it was the same type of noise that we heard in the dining room. It just sounded like the china cabinet had fallen over. But of course, we don't have a china cabinet upstairs. It's, it's just a scary, scary thing to happen. That's when we started to believe that, it, that there was something in the house. Before this, nothing's really ever happened in my life that made me think about other people being here or entities or whatever. Someone hears a very loud sound, like the sound of breaking glass or even pots and pans falling, it can be an indication that a portal, a spirit portal, has opened. Wayne and Darcy tried to live with the strange noises, but worse was yet to come. We've seen different shadow figures, especially in the dining room. The dining room has seemed to have the most activity in the house. They're usually very quick. Like, it's like a, a flash of something going across the dining room. It's a bit nerving, you know, it, it gets you. It makes your blood go, wondering what's going on. Soon, the manifestations plaguing Wayne and Darcy's house would become much more disturbing. Turned on the light, and there was a head floating right in right in the middle of my view. And it was an old man. It was not solid, it was like an apparition. He was looking directly at me. We, if you can call it, made eye contact. We did. I ran back upstairs, pretty much white as he was, and scared to death. He looked frightened, very frightened and shocked. My wife pretty much freaked out as much as I was, because like, that doesn't happen every day. <laughs> you don't just see a head floating in the air. It took a long time for me to get over that. That was a very scary episode. In some cases, um... An individual may only see a portion of the body of the spirit, such as a head or the body or the legs, because that's all that that spirit is capable of manifesting with the energy they have. Then the activity took a darker and more dangerous turn and started to target Wayne and Darcy. I started to wake up, and I knew that Wayne had already gotten up because I heard the television just lately. I tried to move just to get up like you normally would and push the covers off, and I couldn't move. a terrifying apparition appeared in her home, Darcy Tripp became the focus of the paranormal activity. And now, it had taken a darker turn. It felt like something was completely on my entire body from my neck down. I couldn't move. My arms were on top of me, and I was on my back. And I could feel the blankets around me. And I didn't know what was going on and I started to panic. 
and I tried to call out for Wayne, but nothing, I couldn't get enough air in to get a noise out. And I tried to call his name, and I could just get a little bit of, of a grunt out, not very loud. All of a sudden, I heard sort of screaming, sort of moaning, coming from the upstairs. So I went running up the stairs. <laughs> it, it looked like something was laying on top of her when I first walked in. I was very afraid from that happening because that was the first, um, what I consider some sort of an attack or something negative. Yeah, it freaked me out pretty good. I feel that it was getting personal at that point. Unable to take it anymore, Wayne and Darcy contacted a team of paranormal investigators. We were looking for validation. We were looking for other people to witness, of course, things that we have. So the paranormal team were in our bedroom, and they were asking for a sign or for somebody to show something for them. sounded like somebody walked in the door and then up the stairs to the second floor. Oh, gosh. Hi, you guys. The lead investigator, um, he started to sweat profusely and they could tell from their equipment that the temperature in the bedroom had went up at least five degrees. He had to leave the bedroom and come downstairs to get rid of that sensation. Undeterred, the investigators continued trying to reveal exactly what was plaguing the house. They had some knocks, some bangs, um, shadow movement in the dining room. They were getting ready to come down to the basement. Did you hear that? Yeah. I heard that. And you heard a voice in a Scottish accent. It sounded like he said, Bendy Rabbit. In the conversation, it didn't make sense. But once they took it back to their place and played it over and over again, Somebody there said, play that part backwards. I don't have anything. You hear the EVP, and Bendy Rabbit becomes, I don't have anything. And when they played that for us, oh, the hair stood up on the back of my neck. The voice completely validated that we knew that something was here and that we weren't, um, we were of sound mind. We, we knew there was something here. It just made me feel that I'm not crazy. This is really happening. In an unusual move, Wayne and Darcy decided to publicize their experience in the local newspaper and ask the public for help. We actually went to this the Sarnia paper and put it out there and there was a big write-up. The family members of the family that lived here came to us with their opinion of who the Scottish gentleman's voice might be on our EVP. And their mom and dad that lived here had a border and the border was Scottish it sounds weird, um, but we have no intention of leaving right now. Until recently, nothing really was personal. 
It's just something trying to let us know what was here. Darcy and Wayne are still living in peace with their ghost, at least for now. Coming face to face with a ghost is a disturbing experience. But when an obsessive demonic entity watches your every move, your relationships, your mental health, even your life could be at risk. Okay, uh, Paranormal Survivor 2, Beth's Haunted Garage. Take one. The house was under foreclosure when we purchased it, and um, moving from a small uptown apartment, uh, it was extremely appealing for just the outdoor lifestyle we could lead. When we came into the garage uh, for the first time, it had been abandoned for quite some time, and it always gave me an uneasy feeling. It's always been kind of menacing. Because of that feeling, Beth generally stayed away from the garage. But her boyfriend spent most of his time there, using the upstairs as a jam space. He had been in here with a group of his bandmates. And when they took a break, they actually heard like satanic prayer music coming through the speaker system. And this was kind of like an ungodly preaching to Satan, asking for Satan's children to join this fold. They were completely freaked out by the entire situation. Slowly after that, the band eventually broke up and, and the jamming kind of stopped in here. Beth even felt uncomfortable whenever she was in view of the garage. I would feel the presence of, of somebody watching me through the window every night when I was home alone. It would draw my eye. in the garage one day and everything was turned off and he had come inside the house and grabbed a drink of water. Beth Shaw and her boyfriend had started to experience weird things in their garage. And when he came back outside, everything was going, and it had been going for a few minutes, and he was just distraught. He kept it to himself that day. He didn't tell me about it. Spirits tend to do many things to try to get your attention because the living do not always pay attention. So they will go to sometimes drastic measures. And because electronic items are so easy for them to manipulate, that's usually where they'll start. Eventually, Beth and her boyfriend broke up. And when he left, he had a warning for her. When he moved out, he actually pulled me aside and let me know that when he was here, he experienced several different paranormal activities happening in front of him. But at the time, he knew how I'd feel about it. 
but he told me when he sat me down and, and let me know that something might be concerning to me if I'm here alone. Looking for answers, Beth sought the help of a psychic. I was feeling extremely afraid and uh, alone, and so I, it prompted me to kind of want to dig into it further and see if there was something out here. I had gone to a psychic uh, in town. that she could see a man staring at me through a broken window. And um, when she said that, a chill ran through my entire core. When you look upon my garage from my window, you see a window that I personally installed, and it's not broken, but there's a split screen in the window. So it appears to be broken from the outside. And she just said that he had very ill intent um, towards me and that I should watch out. He wasn't a good spirit and he was, you know, kind of standing lord over the land that I was currently on by myself. Evil spirits, negative spirits, or even demonic spirits will often uh, derive either pleasure or joy from terrorizing an individual and they may go further than that to try to destroy that individual. I thought it would be kind of intriguing to have people over and do a seance. And we had a big bonfire after the seance, and there was probably about 20 or 30 people here. It was beautiful, beautiful night, no wind, beautiful fire. I woke up several hours later and I looked in back where we had all been haphazardly sitting around the bonfire and not in any formation at all. And all of my chairs had been laid down in a semicircle in front of the fire pit with one chair standing alone. And it completely freaked me out. I took pictures of the event when it happened. Uh, I contacted my, my close friend Diana, who had started up the Loyalist City Paranormal Society. I was kind of taken aback because I wasn't expecting a haunted garage for my first investigation. I figured it would be a house, and I was sort of um, unique in that way that it was a, a garage that uh, was causing the issues. We had our night vision cameras pointed towards the window, and so we wanted to make sure that um, we could see the room clearly without the light interference. Um, we found a tarp so we um, sort of maneuvered it onto the window. We had one camera that was shooting. And you can hear us leaving and go out into the, into the backyard. all of a sudden you see the tarp fall off the window and you can hear footsteps clearly walking away from where the tarp was. You can almost hear what sounds like a breathing in the background. The window had a vapor lock over top of it and uh, you can see sort of what looked like a hand pushing the um, corner of the vapor lock slowly and then just letting go again. It was really um, actually quite scary. Soon, the investigators would feel the spirit's hand themselves. Strange things were happening in Beth Shaw's garage. And since calling in paranormal investigators, things had gotten even worse. One of the 
of our investigators was actually touched on the leg. Um, and she was, she felt as if she was poked. I was terrified. I was terrified when I heard that. Um, I didn't, one thing to have a spirit that's actually able, that you can physically see, but that it can physically assault you was, uh, it was a whole different realm. Once the recording devices were set up, Diana and her team decided to try to communicate with the spirit. So the ghost box is sort of an experimental tool that we use, and uh, it was invented to um, create sort of a white noise, which gave the spirits a medium to speak through. It's um, like real-time EVPs, so you're asking questions and you're getting a response, hopefully, right away. Every time that I started the ghost box, you could hear noises upstairs. So we'd start it just about getting ready to ask questions, and then we'd hear a bang upstairs. So we'd turn it off and, um, and say, who's up there? And um, can you do that again? And then we would hear nothing. As soon as we turned the ghost box back on again, you would hear another bang, turn it off, and the same thing over and over again. It's almost as if it was playing games with us. They came with the intent to catch something, and I think that they did. And then we started asking questions. We had asked a lot of questions. We were asking if it was uh, male or female. And then eventually we just, we said, you know, is there, um, do you have something that you want to say to Beth? And it gave us a clear yes. So we immediately stopped and, and went over to get her. I was extremely uneasy. I was able to hear a man's raspy voice. Die, Beth, die. Say my name and say, like, die, Beth, die. <laughs> Specific words that you kind of, like, like, gone and die and Beth, and it was just very specific things to kind of make me very afraid of, of this place. When we heard it, I was, um, all of us, I think, were kind of unnerved by it. We all felt that, you know, it's, it's really sort of um, like honing in on Beth, and that's like, it, it was kind of worrying us that it was almost obsessed. So um, we were asking about Beth's ex-partner, and we asked, did, um, did you like this guy? And on the ghost box, Immediately afterwards, you hear, it sounds like it says, kicked him out. So basically, it, it was in that same male voice, he was saying, you know, like, I didn't want him here, so I drove him away. I was extremely overwhelmed when I heard that. I was extremely emotional. Our psychic medium had mentioned that um, she could tell that the, the spirit was not human, it was not of uh, human nature. And um, she had said that it was very negative. I think she actually called it a nasty. She felt really um, that it was fixated on Beth. And um, we need to clear it and, uh, and get it away from Beth, basically. Fearing what the entity would do next if left unchecked, Beth wanted it gone. The entity was sort of attached to the land, so she felt it necessary to have a clearing. She set up boundaries, buried some crystals around um, the property, and, uh, and asked that it, that it keep away. It's almost like putting up a fence, and she almost felt as if it was playing games at times with us, and while she was doing the clearing, she said she could sort of like feel like he was outside kind of, uh, like upset that it was being asked to stay away and uh, sort of um, like taunting and trying to intimidate her. The entire time she was here cleansing the area, I felt like a force was pushing forward, just pushing forward the whole time.
The next morning, it felt like like a, like a new, like after a fresh rain, it just felt like a new place. I was absolutely terrified when this was all going down. The garage for us was definitely one of the, the creepiest investigations that we've ever done. Um, this is one of the ones that stands out and we always talk about. I had actually gone and revisited the first psychic and she, without me even prompting, she immediately told me that the spirit was now contained, that it wouldn't be able to bother me anymore, and it couldn't, it couldn't move and it couldn't harm me anymore.